Hey guys, quick update from my garage. I thought I'd post this one to YouTube because I'm sure there's a, a few people out there who'll be interested in this. Um, due to the Parrot Disco being discontinued and the lack of spares for it, there's probably quite a few people with Parrot Disco parts and looking to replace into a new body. Uh, I had the idea of, of doing this when I damaged my Parrot Disco. Uh, not saying I crashed it, honestly. So when I did that, actually, I spent time building a proper FPV plane, which I've yet to made in, uh, the Zod Dart 250G. Now, I wanted something to put all of my Parrot Disco parts in, but I was concerned about the fitment mainly on the Parrot Chuck, which is quite a big flight controller, and with it having the camera built into it, that means that it has to pretty much sit at the front unless you're going to not use that Parrot Chuck camera. So really what I wanted was a plane where it was going to be as simple as possible to take all of the components of the Parrot and fit them to the new plane. Now, the Zod Dart XL seemed like a really good candidate, and I must admit, I took a little bit of a punt in terms of going for this and seeing if I could modify it to fit everything in. Now, the good news is, that Parrot Chuck looks like it was literally made to fit in that front compartment. And to give you an idea, this is basically the exact width of the chuck, the narrowest point here. Uh, so there's no issues in fitting the chuck in. There's a small modification that you have to make here by cutting out an area for the power button and the pitot tube to fit in. A uh, tiny bit of modification required with a sharp blade to the underside of this just so that it doesn't impact the uh, chuck when you put it on. But as you can hear and see you know, that literally goes on there perfectly now. God, the magnets are more powerful than I can imagine. Let's just show you that briefly again. Make it look difficult. So, as you can see, it slid in. Magnets gripped. And it's perfectly flush all around. I did take a tiny piece out the, the front of that to allow it to go around the back of the power button. Uh, because the chuck is as far forward as it can go and you can see the lens is a, only needs a very small modification to fit into the pre-existing piece. Now, the next piece that I've changed to the OEM Parrot Disco part is the motor. So this is the OEM folding prop disco motor so that will plug directly into the parrot chuck flight controller i certainly had a lot of concerns about this piece you know i thought if i can't use the stock motor it's going to be extremely difficult because this has stuff like reverse thrust built into it and obviously the esc for that motor is actually contained within the chuck so changing the esc would certainly be a complex scenario uh, the great news is that, yep, we just need to do a short extension on the, the power cables to this motor and it will reach the chuck without difficulty. Um, now, if we open the back panel here, you can see the original Parrot Disco battery is located easily in that rear section. And in fact, you could fit a choice of batteries. Now, I had upgraded my Parrot Disco battery to this rather heavy and big 5.2 amp uh, 3S graphene turnage pack. Now this worked great in the in the disco itself, uh, despite being about double the weight of the original Parrot battery and uh, you know, a fair bit bigger in size. It was still able to be modified into the original disco chassis without any difficulty and it enabled flight times of about one hour. There is also the option of using this uh, this is actually a pack that I'd made up for the Dart 250G, so I'm planning on running that on 3S lithium-ion. However, I'm now starting to think, with the lighter weight of this pack, I mean, it's like half the weight of the, the 3S LiPo 5200, and these are supposed to, supposedly 3500 milliamp hours each, so you've got a total of 10,500 milliamp hours in there. 
I don't actually believe that. I think they're probably closer to two and a half thousand, but even then, you know, for half the weight, you're still getting about 50% extra capacity for a lot smaller size than you would with a LiPo. Now, you know, LiPos are great. They're fantastic when you need high power output, but this is more about efficiency, long range, and obviously we've popped this motor on there from the original Parrot Disco, which is incredibly efficient. So, the lithium ion might be the way to go. When I test it at first, I'm probably just going to use the OEM Disco battery and see how we get on. Now, there were another couple of concerns when I first looked at this Parrot Disco motor, which, may I add, you know, literally bolted straight onto the bolt pattern of the Zod, didn't have to change anything, even the thread size of the screws were the same and you get the additional benefit of a little bit of vibration absorption on the uh, disco motor in comparison to the original Zod motor that they shipped with. Now you can see that the Zod motor is quite a bit bigger. I know the Parrot is 1280 kV and this is 1300. I mean, in terms of how much thrust they produce, I've got no idea. The other thing is that the Disco was a 750 gram plane. Now, when I added this to it, that added about an extra 200 grams, so that took it up to about 950. And the Zod, fully laden, is quoted to be about 1200. Now, I've just weighed it, and with the battery, it looks to be, again, about 900, 950. Quite hard to to weigh something like this on a tiny set of scales that I've got, but certainly, you know, the weight difference is not much compared to the Parrot Disco. So, yes, we might have got a higher thrust to weight ratio by using the original motor, but it would have given us all the problem of wiring in this different EFC here, the 40 amp that's included with the Zod Dart XL. Uh, and it would have also meant an additional component, right? The EFC would have had to sit in the back there where I've now got the battery, so. I'm quite happy that I don't have to use this motor and just keeping my fingers crossed that that thrust to weight ratio is correct. So if you give me a few days, I need to get another couple of pieces for this. I need to get an XT60 to XT60 extension. I really can't be bothered to make one up because uh, I think the only decent piece of wire that I've got is here and I'd like to keep all this in one piece. So I won't be messing with that. What I would like to do, because the, the real area that the disco is a letdown, the original Parrot Disco, which, you know, for those of you who don't know what the original Parrot Disco is, it's, there's the main fuselage of it there. Looking rather beaten and bruised from a year of use. Uh, so the additional thing that I'd like to do with this Zod Dart XL is add another FPV camera so that I don't need to use the digital FPV that was included with the Parrot Chuck because to be honest it was pretty rubbish but there still remain two key challenges to getting this on as Maiden the first is the antennas now if you're not familiar with the Parrot Disco antennas they're horrible horrible things well, they're not horrible, but they're strange, circular, and you can see they're kind of stepped, and they would have fitted into this space underneath here. I don't plan to make cutouts like that in the bottom of the wings of the Zod, and there's certainly not enough room in the main body to do that, so I'm going to have to change the antennas. I do have some true, true RC singularity uh, side feed antennas. Uh, to give you an idea, they look like that. So these are 2.4 gigahertz antennas, so should hopefully work well with the original Parrot Sky Controller 2. Uh, running on 2.4 gig. Uh, one small problem is that they don't have the correct connector and I need to get an adapter in order to connect them to the chuck. Uh, and the one other issue that I have is this hole here. So the parrot chuck has an optical flow sensor in the bottom of it as well as what I think it's a barometer or something underneath there. So I'm going to need to 
cut a hole, probably with a hole saw, and unfortunately it's right where that front landing skid is, so probably need to cut a hole and then make up some smaller landing skid for the front uh, to prevent this from getting damaged. And also cutting a big hole in the bottom of that is going to affect the structural rigidity. However, if that is the biggest problem that I come across on this build, I'm going to be extremely happy. Um, you know, I really love flying the Disco. It's a very easy plane to fly, and it's one that you can give your kids and your mates to fly. Whereas, you know, using a real controller like the TX-16S is a, a steep learning curve, especially when you've got buttons for all sorts of different functions. Uh, and having proper FPV goggles with the, the Dart 250G isn't something I really relish, and I say proper, I've got the cheapest DHC and EV800Ds, I, I couldn't shell out 400 quid on a, a set of fat sharks, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be interesting, um, and hopefully a little bit enlightening for fellow parrot disco owners who find themselves in the same position as me, unable to get spare parts such as wings, and with wings that... Well, this is one of the better ones, actually. In fact, I think this is probably the best wing that I have left. Uh, that one has a tear. So you can see I've had to tape that one up because it's, it's actually physically torn there. And this one is the worst one. This is literally torn all the way down the elevon uh, where it attaches. So that was the reason really for decommissioning this parrot. It just had bash after bash after bash. My dog had jumped on it. Uh, it was just starting to look a little bit beaten and I thought it was time to retire that and try something new. So hopefully that's of interest to you guys, either parrot owners or Zod owners looking for something different to do with your Dart XL. Uh, I can't decide whether to call this the Zod Disco or the Parrot Dart, but it's certainly one of the two. Cheers guys, bye for now.